Good evening, councillors. It is 6.30 p.m. I will call the Tuesday, April 16th meeting of the Superior Common Council to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Clerk, please call the roll. President Ledeen. Here. Councillor Van Sickle. Here. Councillor Moffitt. Here. Councillor Sweeney. Absent. Councillor Fennessy. Here. Councillor Elm. Here. Councillor Ludwig. Here. Councillor Herrick. Here. Councillor Johnson. Here. And Vice President Grasky. Here. Uh, I will now ask the clerk to administer the oath of office for our uh, newly elected officials. Uh, so if Councillors Ledeen, Moffitt, Fennessy, Ludwig, and Johnson could please come down uh, in front of the rotunda here. All right, 1st District, Nicholas Ledeen, for 3rd District, Garner Moffat, for 5th District, Brent Fennessy, for 7th District, Ruth, Ruth Ludwig, and for 9th District, Mark Johnson. Having been elected as an older person for the Common Council of the City of Superior, Douglas County, Wisconsin, please raise your right hand and repeat after me to take your oath of office. I swear that I will support, I swear that I will support. the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. Of the State of Wisconsin. I, will I will faithfully discharge the duties as a member of the Common Council, of the Common Council. to the best of my ability. So help me God. Thank you. Congratulations, counselors, on your reelections. Uh, as you are taking your seats, I will, uh, our next item will be the selection of the council president for the 2024 year. I'll ask the city attorney to explain the process for selecting our council president and vice president. Good evening and congratulations. By statute, this is your reorganization meeting and uh, you're charged with selecting um, 
leadership from amongst your group. We will start with uh, selection of your council president. And to nominate, it's simply state of voice. We'll field a second to that nomination, and that'll be a candidate. And we can do that as many times as, um, as, we, as we want, we can have as many nominees as we want. We'll invite each candidate to address the council for three minutes, um, at which time we will do a roll call vote simply by stating the name of your preferred candidate for the, for the position. If more than two are nominated and no candidate receives six votes, six votes is the goal, um, we'll have the top two candidates go to a final vote. Um, there are scenarios where there can be more than two nominated, but no top two vote getters. In this instance, I suppose everyone could be nominated for president and um, each person or th rather three people could be nominated for president and each, pe each person could get three votes. I s think that's highly unlikely, but that's obviously a scenario where you don't have, not only do you not have a candidate getting six votes, but you wouldn't have even a leading candidate of that in that scenario. We'll deal with that uh, when we get to it, if we get to it. Um, not likely to be a tie with nine of you here tonight, so that's... Um, not something we'll, we'll, we'll probably have to, to deal with. So with no further instructions, unless anyone has any questions that I can clarify, by the way, we'll repeat the process for the selection of your vice president. But if you have uh, no other questions for me at this time, um, the field is open for nominating a candidate. Again, this is for council president. Floor is open. Are there any nominations for council president? Uh, there's a nomination for Councilor Grasky with a second. Are there any other nominations for Council President? Yes. Are there any other nominations for Council President? Are there any other nominations for Council President? Uh, Councilor Grasky, you have three minutes to address the Council. Okay. Well, um, I'll keep it short and light because nobody needs to see my face be completely beat red for three minutes. But um, first and foremost, uh, District 10, um, thank you so much for your support over three years entering fourth year here. Um, obviously, the trust of this council and this leadership position, I thank you very much. Um, and personally, um, there's a lot happening in District 10 that I hope that this council can listen and be a part of that process and really start supporting some of the things that will start affecting the whole city. So I look forward to this year and us getting to it. So thank you all very much. Nominations are closed and Councilor Grasky is unopposed for president. Uh, I will therefore entertain a motion to formally close nominations uh, and approve the, uh, the selection of Councilor Grasky as council president. Uh, is there objection to that question? Hearing none, all those in favor of electing Councilor Grasky, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. The motion carries. Con uh, congratulations, Madam President. Uh, the floor is now open for nominations for Council Vice President. Councilor Grasky. I'd like to nominate Ruth Ludwig for I'll second. Vice President. Uh, there is a nomination, a second for Councilor Ruth Ludwig for Vice President. Uh, are there, she is nominated. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Uh, Councillor Ludwig, you have three minutes to address the council. I too will make it short and sweet. Um, thank you to my um, District 7 residents for um, their faith in me and um, voting uh, for me. I believe this is my fifth, um, fifth round um, being on the council, so thank you. Um, those of you who have worked with me on this council in the past know how passionate I am about the environment, mainly our parks, our gardens, our municipal forests, and how those green and blooming spaces tie into the quality of life in our community. Because I know Lindsay's passion for the cultural arts, another area that leads to improved quality of life in our community. Recently, I've been throwing a few ideas her way on how to 
uh, incorporate the cultural, cult, cultural arts into our parks and gardens. As a leadership team working together, I believe we can meld our two passions together to lead our community into creating even more attractive, interesting, and educational green spaces to increase our quality of life in our community. Um, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Ludwig is also unopposed, so unless there is objection, I will put the question to the Council on the election of Councillor Ludwig. Uh, therefore, all those in favor of electing Councillor Ludwig, Vice President of the Council, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed say no. The motion carries. Congratulations, Madam Vice President. And I, I should say, well, it's tough to try. We don't keep good track of who all our Vice Presidents were in the history of the city. I, I think that this is the first time we have had uh, uh, the leadership entirely occupied by women. So congratulations to both of you. Uh, we can move on to the agenda. Item 3.1 is a public hearing to request comments on the 2023 Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report. Is there an objection to opening the public hearing? Uh, hearing none, the public hearing for uh, the CAPER is now open. Would anybody like to speak in this public hearing? This is specifically about uh, uh, the Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report. Would anybody like to speak in the public hearing? Would anybody like to speak in the public hearing? Would anybody like to speak to the CAPER public hearing? Hearing none, I don't believe there's a resolution for this, right? I don't see one for the report. Um, then the public hearing is now closed. Item 4.1 is the approval of the April 3rd, 2024 regular council meeting minutes. Motion is by Councilor Herrick, second by Councilor Johnson. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed say no. The motion carries. Item 7.2 is the business of the Public Works Committee with a meeting held on April 4th. Is there a report from the chair? Uh, actually, the mayor's report first. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't uh, see and I actually do have a little bit of something here tonight. The uh, first... Counselors, I want to invite you all to Homegrown Soup Night coming up before our next council meeting. That will be Thursday, May 2nd. That's where all of Homegrown sort of centers on Superior. We have a mayor's reception at 5.30 p.m. that night at uh, the Cedar Lounge or the, or, or the, or sorry, the Festival Grounds. The Festival Grounds. Uh, the, uh, but there will be performances all over Superior, so I encourage you to check that out and uh, uh, try to have us fairly well represented out there. And, uh, show that the concerts on this side of the bridge are just a little bit more popular. Uh, and in terms of business, I don't know, did they, did they get the memo for committees? Okay, so you will have all received the memo by now from the clerk uh, describing your committee preferences. Please rank them all. Of course, you, you see them separated. This has been the source of a great deal of confusion among members of the leadership in the past few years. Quite simply, the, the five committees you see up top are the standing committees uh, that the president and vice president will be appointing, uh, subject to your confirmation. More or less, everything below that are count seats reserved for counselors or that could have counselors or city officials on them and are generally appointed by the mayor. Those rules are not universal to all of them, but generally speaking, uh, that's how they're going to work. There's a lot that has to be filled there. So my advice is if, if something's important to you, just, just say it. There may be somewhere it's not even really – there really aren't any openings. Like technically right now there are no openings on the Superior Housing Authority, but there, there will be some in the near future. So if something's important to you, it is still important for me to know about that. And uh, for members of the leadership uh, – what time did – when did we want these back? So end of the day – Tuesday next week, please submit these to either the clerk's office or directly to uh, President Grasky or Vice President Ludwig so that they can begin assembling these so that we can get these approved at the next meeting. The other thing I would say is all of the other committees, commissions, boards uh, that I appoint, including many that don't have council representation, I've been striving over the last few months to consolidate those to this upcoming meeting. I want to make all of the appointments at the same time, so just to make the calendar a little easier, so we know when terms start and end, uh, and we can take 
uh, do one big kind of communication to the public that says, hey, if you want to serve in local government in some capacity, we could use you. I want to do that all at once. So my message to you is help me do that. Help me recruit folks, these many committees. You can see it all in our city directory on the website. Uh, but I'm going to be making quite a few appointments. A lot of them will be reappointments, but nothing is guaranteed. So if you know folks that would like to serve in government in any capacity, just want to be involved, I'd like to know those names. If you know somebody that has a particular passion to work on one particular thing that's been asking you to serve in a particular capacity, uh, uh, let me know that as well. If uh, and, and if folks are interested, just have them send an application. Send an email, tell you about it. You can tell me any way for them to get to us so that we can get this done over the next uh, three weeks. That is committees. Any questions about the committee selection process? That is my report. No, okay. Item 7.2 is the business of the Public Works Committee with a meeting held on April 4th. Is there a report from the chair? Thank you, clerk. Um, I, I thought that we did an approval for the stormwater flood control program, but it's not here in the recommendations, but that could be fine and on purpose. Am I missing that? It's Director Janigo. Or would that not be yeah, Director on Janigo, this one? do you know the answer to that? Um, not quickly. I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, at the minutes right now. Um. Would that just not have been on the recommendations? It looks like we approved it. Mm -hmm. In committee. In committee, correct. Uh -huh. I'm wondering if that if that got missed or if there was some other kind of communication error. Okay. It's at least possible, though unlikely, it's at least possible that it didn't require council approval, but regardless, if it okay. has to come to council, we'll get it at the next meeting. Okay. Um, well, I, I'll just go ahead with my prepared part on that, um, just to front load everybody. So um, for the first time in the program's history, the stormwater flood control program um, had a property go over $10,000 um, for a variety of reasons, uh, mostly just that the property itself was complicated. Um, so um, e uh, ESD's Aaron Abr Abramson um, printed off a report, so I just wanted to share with you a little bit about um, the that, con that stormwater flood control program that... Um, you know, all of our um, residents, for the most part, have access to. Um, so uh, the program was started in 2008 by, I think, Councillor McKenzie at the time. And um, since then, we've done about 550 of um, these replacements. Um, and over, over those years, uh, by district, the most have been completed in the third, the fifth, and the seventh. Um, on average, we do about 26 a year, um, with, and it, it really ramped up after 2012, um, where it went from three or five to almost 50, um, and then there was a peak um, in 2019 with 56. So I just wanted to share that with you guys, because um, I just thought it was interesting. Um, and um, regarding... Um, the recommendations. Um, the landfill had a very specialty um, installation that we approved. This is um, in preparation again for um, the landfill being nearly at capacity. So there are some gas wells going in that have always been needed and planned for. Um, the erosion at Wisconsin Point, um, this uh, item 7.2.2 is a way to um, prepare for the nourishment. Um, so this will create something of a buffer um, um, off the shoreline uh, to help with that erosion. And um, uh, again, you'll see the mill and overlay work in there. So that's when uh, we rent uh, equipment that will scrape the street down, and then it'll feel like months and months go by um, before we go through and um, lay new asphalt. Um, that's because we rent the equipment, so it, it actually probably is months. Um, 
and you'll see that, um, oh, I don't see the, the first item on there, so I guess I won't worry about that either. But I also wanted to um, just acknowledge Bill Amorty, who has run our municipal airports um, uh, in a motion to approve items um, 7.2.1, 7.2.2, 7.2.3, 7 and 7.2.4. The motion to approve all the recommendations of the Public Works Committee. Is there a second? Second. Uh, the motion was by Councilor Van Sickle, second by Councilor Ludwig. Uh, Director Janigo? Yes, the, uh, uh, the documentation on the stormwater flood control program requires, um, I just, just took me a minute to get there requires uh, approval by the Public Works Committee, does not require council approval, and pr likely because it's a it's a smaller amount. So by approving at the Public Works Committee, it's approved. So it doesn't need formal council approval. Uh, the motion is to approve all four recommendations to the Public Works Committee. Uh, and I, uh, because of this is an amended agenda, this, this isn't terribly interesting, but uh, item uh, 7.2.2, the submerged land lease, that relates to the item that we added at the last minute here before the meeting, which is 10.4. I'm just going to forget to explain that. There's not much to explain, but uh, those two items are related. Uh, the, they're the same project, I mean. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting all four recommendations, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. The motion carries. Item 7.5 is the business of the public safety committee with a meeting a special meeting held on april 11th is there a report from the chair um we'll keep it we'll keep it short um we had a special meeting on april 11th um to relook at the electric fire truck there were some questions on council regarding that so they send it back to public safety we, we, we had our questions answered um it was approved unanimously and sent back here for you, um you guys's approval so any questions i'm here to answer, Chief Volbrecht is here. If not, I will move motion to uh, re recommend the approval out of the Public Safety Committee. Second. Motion by Councilor Dean, second by Councilor Herrick uh, to approve the recommendation, which is the purchase of Rosenbauer uh, EV fire engine in the amount of uh, $1,853,702. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the purchase, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed say no. Motion carries. At this time, are there any further committee or commission reports to be made without recommendations? Seeing none, we can move on to old business. Old business, 9.1, I am recommending the approval of original Class B beer and liquor license application for Alice's Palace, LLC, located at 1108 Tower Avenue for a period beginning January 1st through June 30th, 2024. So, counselors, I'll, I'll introduce this again briefly. Thank you for your patience on this. We have reached an agreement with uh, the applicant, Mr. Nelson, uh, for several or three conditions uh, on the license. It, it's slightly different than um, than I explained to you last uh, last week. Uh, I, I, we offered, and he had originally agreed that that the palace would close at midnight every night until December 30th. He asked that be uh, 1 a.m. instead. Uh, I, I agreed to that. I think that accomplishes basically the same thing. Uh, we were just looking to have it close before bar close and that uh, we would have review of the employees on the premises, similar to how we've done at other licenses where we've had uh, problems in the past. Uh, that will expire in uh, one year from the renewal. So uh, this, this license is only good till June. Uh, the condition will stay on at renewal, but in June of 2025 will expire unless you on your own initiative decide to add it. Uh, and uh, again, he, uh, the license will become effective upon proof of control of the property. So uh, uh, namely uh, title to the property. Um, all that's explained in the conditions, um, which are attached to the license application now. So I am recommending approval of this license with the attached conditions. Uh, motion is by Councillor Ledeen, second by Councillor Grasky. Uh, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the license uh, with the attached conditions, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed say no. The motion carries. 
Uh, item 10.1, I am recommending approval of miscellaneous licenses. Motions by Councilor Fennessy, second by Councilor Elm. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion carries. Item 10.2, Councilor Moffitt is recommending waiving the bidding requirements and approve a resource management and grant capacity service agreement with MC2 Collaborative in an amount not to exceed $81,000 from the Neighborhood Improvement Fund. Councilor Moffitt, please. Thank you. Um, I, I recognize this is a little non-traditional uh, for our processes and I appreciate my colleagues letting me uh, speak on this this evening. Uh, I'm super nerdy and where other people's news feeds are maybe filled with sports updates or uh, travel recommendations or all sorts of things, I rec get recommendations on urban planning uh, and weird grants and things like that because that's kind of my bubble. So um, this it was a uh, recommendation for a Zoom online webinar that popped up in my feed for an EPA climate justice grant. And nerdy like I am, I said, well, gosh, that sounds really exciting. Uh, I wonder what that is. And so I went to the Zoom presentation. Um, and um, these are set up kind of like a community development block grant but they're available through the EPA. They're meant to target communities like ours that have been negatively affected by industrialization, um, are at risk of climate change, um, have uh, maybe low income communities, high, could be high minority uh, communities or other things. They have a map available that shows areas that do qualify based on the income criteria alone, because um, that's produced through census data. So um, I looked at the map just to see if this was something that was possible for us um, and found out that the uh, census tracts that are north of Belknap in um, Superior qualify for this. Potentially other areas in the city um, could qualify maybe through other criteria, um, but this is a fairly complicated process I figured out immediately. Uh, and so... I didn't want to have to make the argument that an area qualifies and then make the argument that our uh, community should get it. There's approximately $3 billion allocated for this program through the EPA. Uh, 2.8 of it goes towards actual grants, and then the remainder is to help with technical assistance because these are very uh, complicated grants. Um, I spoke with the mayor and um, some of the department heads and was able to kind of talk through what might be possible with this. And um, so I guess I'll just go over a brief overview of some of the stuff that I've learned so far. Um, each applicant can apply for a project of up to $20 million. Uh, and I already talked about the areas north of Belknap and Superior Qualify. Also, there's a small strip of uh, property one block south of that between Super 1 and the library approximately. It lines up with the census tracts um, and the map is attached. Superior can apply by partnering with a nonprofit organization um, and in fact must partner with a nonprofit organization cannot apply, uh, we cannot apply on our own. It's meant to be a community partnership and it's meant to be extremely um, community driven which means that the in order to qualify for this or to receive a grant, we'll need to demonstrate that we've done a great job of reaching out to people in our community to get their input to find out what would make their lives better and that we will um, solicit ideas from them and get their input on things that we think might be good ideas and really kind of include the neighborhood residents um, in the process and selection of a, of a project. So it's really this community-led approach, and I think that our grant is will be much stronger if we have that, can demonstrate that strong input from the residents. Um, the funds, to the best of my knowledge, from what I could glean through this process so far is that the funds need to be spent um, by the end of 2026, but I believe it's like the other ARPA funds in which they can be, um, you know, you could have a, a vendor selected for a particular project, pay the vendor, and then our end of it is done. Um, again, this is to the best of what I've been able to glean through this super complicated process so far. Um, funding can be spent on a ton of different things, like I mentioned. So 
Other projects that have been applied for and have received funding include green infrastructure, food access, affordable housing has been funded, um, solar upgrades. So some communities are doing uh, grants or loans for residents to get solar panels on their roofs to lower their energy costs and create that energy resiliency. Um, clean water, climate disaster preparedness, brownfield cleanup, which is obviously very uh, kind of generic. There's a lot of opportunity there. Um, air pollution monitoring uh, is a big part that's mentioned in there. And so making sure that's part of the health uh, outcomes for neighborhood residents. Um, tree planting, and then they talk about neighborhood-based community organizing capacity. And so how are we creating more cohesive neighborhoods and helping people uh, organize and create that kind of that grassroots neighborhood uh, development. So um, after discussing with the mayor and um, some of the staff members, there's um, some possibilities for projects that we could recommend to residents uh, could include land trust homes in partnership with One Roof Community Housing. Uh, we've talked briefly about that before, but that would create um, permanent affordable housing in those neighborhoods and uh, those areas traditionally now have very low ownership rates compared to the rest, rest of the city. And so to help uh, kind of shift that um, momentum in the right direction. Uh, municipal broadband installation, I think we could make an argument that it would help increase access for education, uh, remote healthcare appointments, job opportunities from working from home at a lot of positions now. And uh, so municipal broadband might be an option for that. Lead water service line replacement, uh, potentially a replacement for fire station two, which could include additional room for more staffing, an, ad an adjacent training facility, air monitoring data that could be shared with the a community uh, on the website, uh, and a community room attached to that, which could be used for neighborhood meetings, emergency shelter if needed, um, community health initiatives. So maybe somebody would come in and do a blood drive or a blood pressure check or, uh, you know, other any, uh, flu shots or any sort of like a community health pop-up kind of things like that. Um, it could be used for local elections, frankly, from the city if we wanted to have that uh, precinct elections there. Um, and then another idea that came up from the Parks Department was uh, Wade Bowl uh, is looking at um, – planning for a splash pad and a public orchard, which would improve public food access and um, park improvements there for recreation and things as well. So um, this is just a list of possibilities, and I think the list will get larger as the community um, is given the opportunity to kind of pitch their ideas to. The main thing I want to talk about tonight is the grant proposal of this nature and scope falls outside of what staff has capacity to manage right now. It's a really big process, which is why the um, the EPA put aside um, like $200 million for technical assistance because the technical assistance is needed. These are really complicated processes, and I don't, I don't want us to drop the ball on other things the city is working on right now. And so um, I think hiring a grant manager to help us through this process is a really prudent suggestion to find um, somebody that's able to walk through. We talked about the idea of like who could potentially manage this. We talked through uh, and I contacted several local grant writers. Um, I do grant writing myself. I've never done a grant this big. Um, the other grant writers I've talked to have not done a grant this big. Um, it's, it's very technical and very complicated. And the people that I spoke to locally don't have the capacity or the time to manage a project of this scale. I did talk to one nonprofit organization in Duluth. Uh, they do have the capacity to manage something like this, and they're already doing it. They're applying for an application for Duluth, and I hope they get it. Um, if Duluth gets a grant and we get a grant, that'd be wonderful, right, I think. Um, none of this money can be spent in my district, but that's not important. Um, these things create ripples in our communities and so when the people um, in this part of town get these things they'll they'll create benefits for the rest of our residents and stuff too like I'll certainly uh, probably visit Wade Park and I'll you know we'll all benefit if we have better emergency services and we'll benefit from a lot of these things and of course um, you know a broadband for example if you can pay for this phase and it speeds along the 
um, financial stability of that uh, utility, then of course it speeds up maybe the next area getting installed and stuff too. And so um, anyway, that's there's a lot on that. The, what I wanted to say tonight is the grant um, strategist that I'm recommending is MC2 of Wyoming. I worked with them on a small project um, previously and they did a great job with that. Lisa's uh, online this evening to answer questions, but I um, am recommending this evening that we skip the bid process and move ahead with us. It's um, the proposal from them is um, contracted by the hour, and it would be um, if we suppose a maximum of 100 hours for six months at 135 an hour would come to $81,000. And so I've set that as the maximum amount. But I think it's important to note that I think we can do this project for a lot less than that. And we would be paying them by the hour, so we'd be able to kind of monitor progress as it goes. Um, the reason that I recommend working with this group is they have a whole team there of grant people and financial strategists, and so they can split up the work uh, and focus on areas that they're each uh, good at and so that they should be able to like create some some real I think cost savings there um, and they won't be fumbling through it like if we tried to hire a local person that maybe isn't familiar with this process so um, I I know it's kind of a stretch to skip our committees and the bid process but in this case um, I think it's the way to go because um, we need to get this approved so that we can get the process rolling, get the application in. The application window is already open. Uh, and in order to be competitive, um, we want to try and get in it as soon as possible and as thoroughly as possible. So that's why I'm kind of proposing that we move ahead on this. So I guess um, I'm available for questions. And Lisa, um, did you want to provide a quick um, introduction to your organization at all? Hello, just confirming that you can hear me. Uh, let me know uh, yes. that you can yes, hear we me. Can hear Sounds you. like it. Perfect. So I am so grateful, Mayor, Council, and uh, Garner Moffat. Thank you for this opportunity. I could not have explained it better. Uh, really, there's you've been a good steward of the history, the information, uh, as well as the work that's been done researching the grant. The only thing I would add is that we have a team of experts which has been um, portrayed. We have a team of 20 uh, and that all have their specialties. And uh, we want to be able to make it as easy as possible and it absolutely can be done for less. Uh, we are familiar in this federal territory. We have literally been, been in the trenches submitting 15 federal grants just within the last uh, 14 days. So it is absolutely familiar territory. Um, we work through the existing process knowing that you've done the work and boots on the ground there. Um, and having been there even myself personally, I'm familiar uh, just having a sense of the, the beauty and the st good stewards of the work that you've been doing already uh, allows us to speak to those specifics. But in addition to that, we also have one of our vice presidents happens to have family in a 50 mile radius that we can also lean on um, and gather information as well. So that is also helpful. Um, I don't know that I have anything more to add. Uh, I would just absolutely say compliments to the leadership for thinking um, progressively. The Biden-Harris administrative dollars are uh, monumental uh, and to be able to access this uh, is really transformational for your community. And so kudos to the leadership in looking at that as, this as an opportunity for your community. And I'll remain um, for questions as well. Councilor Moffat, I assume you would like to move approval? Yeah, so moved. Okay, the motion is to uh, approve the recommending of the waiving of the bidding requirements and approve the uh, agreement uh, with MC2 Collaborative in an amount not to exceed $81,000. Is there a second to the motion? The second is by Councilor Grasky. Discussion or uh, I'll entertain questions of Councilor Moffat. Hey, Mayor Payne, this is Nick Reinhardt, uh, Finance Director. I, Go ahead, I Director Reinhardt. I have one kind of concern with this. Um, you know, as far as I know, we don't have that 81000 apportioned in the budget anywhere. Um, is there plans on where that would come from? Yeah, the motion has it coming from the Neighborhood Improvement Fund. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
discussion or questions? Councilor Fennessy. All right, thanks. Uh, I, I was able to talk with Councilor Moffitt earlier, and uh, he was able to answer some of the questions I had. And I think this project has a, a ton of potential. Um, and, and really, kudos to Councilor Moffitt for for finding this, taking it, running with it. Um, and like I expressed to Councilor Moffitt, the the concern I have here is with the process, and and I think we've missed some very important steps in the process. Um, I don't want to make a motion yet to to refer this because I don't want to I don't want to stop debate. I'd rather you know hear you know hear from the other councilors, but I would rather see this first go to a committee for you know for some discussion for some vetting. And um, because this is this is the first time that this has even been discussed, I would prefer that we at least throw this through through a committee. Whether the, and it, it, I, I, don't, I don't even know what committee that would be. Whether it's the Planning Commission, um, you know, Public Works, Parks and Rec, and um, you know, just kind of get have some discussion there. And um, I would also prefer that this go out for bid. Um, only because I don't know if this if this eighty one thousand dollars spend, and I know it's kind of a it's kind of a huge guess. You know, is it going to be eighty-one thousand? Is it going to be forty thousand? But I don't know if that one hundred and thirty-five dollars an hour is is a screaming deal, or I, I don't know if it's inflated. I don't know if the eighty-one thousand is anywhere in the ballpark. And so I would I would rather this go out for you know for bid. But but probably my biggest reason for wanting to pump the brakes a little bit here is I'm not even sure what we're approving here tonight because in the in the memo and like Councillor Moffat said um, he's requesting the council waive the bidding process for this work and approve the attached agreement with MC2 collaborative in the amount of 81,000 but in the agenda I don't even see an attached agreement there's a there's a proposal that outlines kind of the company's history the scope of work it has some references but I don't there, there isn't an actual contract or, or anything in here so I guess I'm not even sure what we would be a approving, and if if we're going to be voting on eighty-one spending eighty-one thousand for a consultant, I think more than anything we need to be voting on the merits of that actual contract. Where all, all we have here is just a proposal, and in, in that proposal it also lists the hundred and thirty-five dollars per hour as an introductory rate, and so there's. That, that, that's probably my, my biggest reason that I, I think we I think we rush this a little bit, and I appreciate the the, the enthusiasm and let's you know let, let's just get you know, get get to work. I, I truly you know appreciate that, but there, there's there, there's nothing for us to to approve here tonight. There isn't a contract. There isn't a, a you know a, anything. So I, I guess I'm I'm not even sure what we would be a, approving here tonight. I would rather have this. Go back to a committee where we can talk through this, talk through a contract, talk through um, other things. Send it to the contract analyst, have Frog take a look at it, and um, and, and do this right. Uh, I'd, I'd like to address the process just a little bit. Without prejudice, I, I do recommend adoption of this, but I want to keep that separate from this because I, I spoke a great deal with Councillor Moffat about process because I. I I almost always share a lot of the concerns that Councilor Fennessy raised. Uh, uh, department heads approach me all the time about waiving uh, the bidding procedure, and I, I generally handle that by saying, I can recommend it or authorize you requesting that of the council mm -hmm. if you make the case. And I give some parameters. I don't want it to be just, you know, well, I like working with this company. I, I usually want a little bit more argument than that. Uh, now, granted, if they well and truly are best in their field, say that. If they are the only person available, say that. Uh, if something is timely, say that. I just ask department heads to make the case if they're going to waive this. So uh, uh, that's that's what I asked him to do. I think he's uh, – now, whether he's made the case is up to you, not me, but the uh, – uh, I generally am persuaded by it. It's, it, it was enough for me to uh, endorse the proposal. Um, in terms of what we would actually be approving, if there's a motion to refer and you want some advice on where to send it, happy to offer that uh, unless you uh, come up with a recommendation of your own. But the uh, uh, in terms of – what we would actually be approving. This authorizes the administration to make an expenditure to this company in this amount. It is possible that that after we look at it, if it's too thin or uh, if legal starts feeling a little uncomfortable with it, we may ask the 
bring a contract back to the council uh, if we feel that's necessary. We have had plenty of consultancy agreements that are just as thin as this. However, they're almost always under that $25,000 threshold, so you're never hearing about it, uh, just because we have re relationships with consultants that, that help us. This is obviously novel, unique, so these questions are valid, uh, but that I, I hope that answers that question in terms of what you would be approving. You would allow the administration to spend up to this amount with this company. Uh, I don't want to dismiss the risks of that. I have not worked with the company. If, if it turns out that it's not going very well, I am going to stop spending money pretty quickly uh, with them, and we would control that via monthly invoices. I may or may not have answered all those questions, but that's what I know about uh, uh, the background, and I'm, I'm happy to elaborate a little further on that. But until I'm asked a question, Councilor Elm. All right, uh, Councillor Moffitt, uh, thanks for working on this, and it uh, seems pretty comprehensive. Uh, Shares similar concerns with Councillor Fennessy, and I, uh, I don't know if it was addressed. Um, so these questions are probably for you, and I know it had probably to go through Mayor, but the the timeline, you know, what what, what are we risking if if we do put this out to bid? Um, and I don't know if you had stumbled across other potential vendors, and then. You know, what is the success rate of MC2? This is kind of a whole new pot of money that's out there. Um, and certainly capturing and being aware of this dollars, uh, these dollars that could be applied to the city is very exciting. But, um, we, you know, we want to certainly pick the most successful company. And um, I'm, I'm excited about what, where this can go, but I, I don't know what I don't know. And, and I'm not sure if you could elaborate on... Um, more than just you know this coming up on the Facebook feed and then then going into this deeper. So I just want to know what what our options are and and what the success rate. Maybe the the person on the online can can talk talk about their success rate. But th those are just some of my comments and questions. So I don't, I don't know if Councilor Moffat can answer that. Unless and until there's objection, I'll allow Councilor Moffat to respond directly to Councilors individually. Go go ahead, Council. To the best of my knowledge, I don't know other vendors that could complete this project for us. Um, so we did contact, like I said, other local grant writers and things like that, but because it's such a complicated process um, and there's so many like moving pieces, it, it requires a bunch of different skills. And so having a single person work on it, um, they might specialize in one area of the application, but not be able to maybe help with another part. And so um, I, I, I tried to do some research and I'm not, familiar with another vendor that would complete this, um, if that helps answer your question. And then for financial control, um, we're approving an hourly rate, not a full contract amount. Um, and so, um, like as the mayor mentioned, I guess if there is, uh, if we felt the work was unsatisfactory in any way, um, we could, you know, um, not do further work with the vendor. So um, that does offer some control. It's not like we would be writing a check for 81000 um, For the full contract, it's an hourly rate. Um, and so we'd see the progress of the work coming in and have some um, financial control over that. Um, as far as the committee's structure stuff goes, we weren't sure exactly, or at least I wasn't sure exactly, which committee this would go to because it's a number of departments and a number of things going on. Um, and I'm concerned that if it comes back goes to a committee, it's going to really hold up the process because essentially we need to we need to get the grant application process rolling because we're going to need to hold probably late spring public uh, input sessions with residents and then figure out as a community what, what, what projects are we even applying for. And so the council is going to need to come back to this and kind of approve like, well, what kind of like, what do we actually want to apply for? And so after the input, then there's back to the council, then it's back to writing and putting together each proposal. Let's say we decide to throw in fiber optic network. Well, then we need to figure out like, what's the area we're doing? How much is that gonna cost and everything? And so then, um, or we're doing the Wade Park, uh, uh, Wade Bowl improvements or any of these things. We're gonna have to go out and get bids and figure out estimates and all these projects. And so like each of these separate components is gonna need to be like kind of separately managed and we're going to have to have all those put together into one final application process before we can even send it in. Um, and then we have to wait and hear back before we can, of course, you know, know if we're getting it before we can spend any money. And then the money has to be spent within a reasonable time frame, too. And so um, 
Yeah, yes, I, I think it addressed some of them. I, I don't still have a specific grasp on the timeline. I, I, having been involved with some other bidding processes, I know it can be very time-consuming, and we certainly don't want to lose out on anything. But if, if there's another option that's a better value that, I mean, I agree with your assessment that it needs to be a company and a team, but there may be another team out there that can do this too, and I just don't know that, and we haven't put it out for bid. Um, but uh, I guess I don't know if the person on the phone can talk about their uh, MC2's uh, success rate at all. Uh, uh, what was your last name? Lisa. Uh, can you explain, yes. describe your success rate? Yes, and thank you, Mayor, Councillor, and I appreciate the questions. Uh, our success rate on the recent statistics is 93.75%. We don't broadcast that, we don't promote it uh, because it's never a guarantee. But here's what I do know. I can absolutely guarantee that 100% of the grants can be recycled, repurposed and resubmitted and that makes every grant 100% successful. So sometimes we're also asked to write grants knowing that they won't be successful because they're trying to meet a deadline with the intent that they have to enter into multiple funding cycles. Uh, and so they're trying to get their placeholder in the federal system so that they can get those remarks back and resubmit. So yes, our success rate is very high, which is great, uh, but I also go back and lean to the idea that we recycle, repurpose, and resubmit for very purposeful reasons. Also, to address the uh, introductory offer, our rates, our hourly rates are actually higher, and we've reduced the rates, and that has another advantage so that you as an organization can claim also the reduced amount as a non-cash match. So it's a built-in asset that use, the organizations can use uh, for leverage both cash and non-cash in-kind match. And going back to the grant writers versus grant strategists is that we really leverage every opportunity of which I've also just described but we're also looking and analyzing it from a grant surveillance standpoint for federal, state, regional, local, and other. And there are also some other wonderful other opportunities that exist in that. So that again, we are leveraging those existing assets to make sure that you're not using any unnecessary cash if you don't have to. Um, and we'll follow your lead. The other important thing is we're very good soldiers, so we'll follow your lead. And so those these thoughtful and purposeful questions that's being discussed, um, we're, we're all ears and we'll follow your lead, whatever your decisions are. Thank you for that. Councillor Johnson. Thank you. Um, I talked with Councillor uh, Moffitt last week about this down in Madison. Uh, and you know I share everyone's excitement it, it sounds like an amazing opportunity. I do have some kind of some of the same questions I asked uh, Councillor Moffat even down in Madison about uh, you know other other companies that we could partner with. I've done some grant writing too, and this is a uh, it is a headache. Um, a couple of points that I've been writing down and thinking about this as this discussion has been ongoing. Um, by putting this out, I I kind of echo the, some of the statements. We could find someone else uh, that that could help us write this. But I think the other part of that, by putting this out to bid or even back to a committee, um, we might find some partners that want to partner with us for this application because part of this, we need to have a nonprofit organization partner with us. We can't be the sole applicants. That's correct. I see you nodding your head there. So we might be able to find uh, more projects. Uh, and, and I think that in the long run will probably save us money if we're doing some of the legwork ourselves instead of hiring this out and we can do some of that legwork in committee where one question i have though is who who has the oversight of this project is that the administration is it you mean if it's approved if it's approved yeah yeah we uh Typically, where something doesn't fit neatly into any one department, we'll select a department head uh, uh, to oversee it, to do mo schedule most of the meetings with the consultants. Something at this level is going to be in uh, my office is going to be involved quite a bit. I myself may be at a lot of those meetings. Um, I think there's a good chance, you know, uh, Councilor Moffat named a couple. It could be parks, could be planning. I think it's going to depend on which. Uh, uh, department we start looking at is going to have most of the projects that we're looking for in the end um, or 
you know, who, who I think has the most time available. But, I mean, there's a number of considerations, but many department heads have overseen uh, uh, grants and consultants for And I guess that kind of leads in, we don't have anyone that currently is like a grant writer on staff or the county. I think have, just we? about every department head is a grant writer. Well, I know. So let me be more specific. We don't have a job title that grant writer. <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so I guess in this, if we put it back to committee, I mean, we could hold whatever committee that might be. I, I think maybe planning makes the most sense to me. I don't know what everybody, I, what everybody else is thinking, but I mean, we could have a special committee meeting just to talk about this one thing and try to hurry this process up as fast as possible. And I know... Uh, I think sometimes the only thing that moves slower than governmental work is educational work. And so uh, I, I get your concerns there, and I want to make sure we don't miss any deadlines. Are there deadline applications that we would miss by, uh, other than the spending part of it, are there application deadlines? Councilor Moffitt. Yeah, I don't remember the exact deadline for it, um, but the window is already open, and so the longer we wait through a bid, like a committee, process and then a bidding process and then um, selecting our person then it will go out to the community again after it goes to the community then it's going to come back to us to select projects then it's going to go to like we're going to have to design all of these projects then we're going to have to bid all those projects and design all those projects but to we're going to have people and so like uh, this is a, like there's already many phases in which this is going to come back to us again and um, so we're, we're just on a tight schedule because the application window is already open and there's essentially money available until there isn't right yeah. and so they're unrolling approvals and so the sooner we can apply um the better our chances are when i that that makes sense um and when i looked at this uh there's two tracks uh track it one and track two we're applying for track one but there's also a separate track that we could apply up to i think three million dollars as well is there i mean that would be a process that we would work out through this grant writing proposal or are we set to no i think that's that's what uh lisa was just explaining that the the grants are multi-purpose once written they can be resubmitted sure. they can be adapted to other purposes gotcha okay i i i, I tend to kind of agree with some of my colleagues here that maybe sending this to a committee would be uh would be the right move and i i kind of want to vote against this and it's killing me to say that because i am not voting against this grant but maybe voting more for setting it somewhere else um if that makes sense mr uh, mr mayor i know you've heard or offered your advice which committee do you see this uh landing in if 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 we were to go that route if we're going to go if it were going to go to a committee, I would recommend either the plan commission or committee of the whole. Plan commission has uh, administered, uh, has recommended consultants to us in the past and has uh, done new policy out of the Neighborhood Improvement Fund. Uh, committee, uh, plan commission doesn't meet for another month. It actually meets tomorrow, but this would not go to that meeting. It, uh, so it wouldn't meet for another month. And then you, even if it were a special meeting, you're asking citizen members to show up to that. Plus, I have an appointment to make on that. And... Uh, committee of the whole meets at the next council meeting or earlier if you set it and then I, I recommend committee of the whole when councilors just need to talk about something more so if you feel you have a lot more to talk about I'd say committee of the whole if, if you're going to trust plan commission or some other committee to to really make a recommendation and then you can have a very brief discussion and accept the recommendation then then I would do that if you have a lot more to talk about and ask I would recommend committee of the whole can I interrupt for um true parliamentary process here we have a couple paths ahead obviously uh councilors can vote yes and approve uh both of these things that uh, the waiving of the bid process and the approval of the agreement they can vote no if uh and both of those things would fail however if that happened uh you should know uh, i have the authority to put something out to bid uh, uh, because the council must approve the contract, I will put it out to bid immediately if if this fails. Uh, that doesn't mean we have to accept any bids. It doesn't mean we have to complete the bids. If we want to send this, bring this up in another committee, we can keep talking about it and end that bidding procedure. But I will move to keep act to keep this moving if it fails tonight. Third, it could be referred to a committee or disposed of in some other fashion, postponed. But it sounds like referral is the only thing I've heard discussed. Councillor Grasky. Um, okay, so this this one part, 10.2, we're asking for 
like a, a sliver of the whole continuation of the project is what I understand. This is just getting the project started. Um, and though I do agree with it's not normally what we do, but pushing this to the process of setting it in, let's say we pick uh, June 1st is the day that this grant writing starts. I don't know if that's a possibility, but it doesn't necessarily put us in, we're handing this amount of money over tonight per se. I don't, unless you can clarify that somewhat. But what I'm trying to understand is if we're making a small decision tonight per se in the whole idea of the project and some of these concerns where things will get vetted through certain committees and commissions, that is a part of this long process. And the sensitivity of a two-year window plus community input and all of the above, I think the things that some councils are asking for, maybe the majority of the council is asking for, will be met. And I know it seems a little, I don't know, maybe scary to just push this money out without um, kind of really, really dabbling through it. But I think those opportunities will arise. I just want to point that out. And if this was your project as a counselor, would you would you be wanting this to move forward if you knew all of the details? I think Moffat, you have a, or excuse me, Councillor Moffat, you have such an upper hand in this. And we've talked to a lot of, a lot of counselors as well, including myself. But I want this co uh, council to consider that this is just the beginning decision of many, many, many decisions. I just wanted to add that in as a, another thing to think about. I, I have a duty to clarify the question. While Councillor Grasky is correct and we would spend very small amounts for immediate services, that is consistent with how we have always worked with consultants. So I, I hope you can trust me, or at least our past practice, we would spend small amounts immediately Technically, the motion does authorize the administration to spend the whole $81,000. Again, I've never done that. I have no intention of doing that. That would be terribly irresponsible, but it does authorize it. It puts the administration in, in to the administration standpoint. We would be administering this proposal. Uh, Councillor Van Sickle. Thank you, Chair. Um, and thank you, uh, Councillor Moffitt. Um, I was sent this grant twice, and so thank you. Because I was like, no, and if I write another grant, I think Becky would kill me. Um, but I, I agree that um, plan commission makes the most sense. Um, if I've ever wanted to um, create programming from the neighborhood improvement, I would, you know, typically go in front of the plan commission, which, which a majority of the members are here. Um, is there? Uh, um, I have a couple of questions. Um, um, is, is this like a rolling due date or is there a hard submittal submission deadline? Councillor Moffat, I, I, I believe he answered that there, there's no specific due date. There's an window. expenditure date, uh, must be spent by the end of 2026. So we can okay. submit at any point, but first the come, later, the longer we go, okay. the less likely we are to get funds. Okay. And do we have an expectation of submission to when we might hear back is that usually pretty quick Councilor Moffitt. Know? I, I, I'm not sure the specifics on how long people are waiting on this um, you, you know as I kind of indicated before they've set aside 200 million just for technical assistance people because this grant process is fairly complicated I didn't have time um, <laughs> to, to delve that deep into the process and so I don't know how long we would wait to hear back um, but obviously that's a factor because um, they presumably, you know, have a meeting schedule in which they get together and review these or whatever and stuff. And so um, there's a, some sort of delay there in order to hear back. It's not like a, we send it Friday and here on Monday or something, you know. <laughs> so I'm not sure exactly what their process is, but there would be a delay until we heard. Um, and then, you know, we'd have to figure out how to move those project components forward. Um, once we received the funding, you know, to expend the, the funds appropriately. Thank you. Um, is there any opportunity with the $200 million of technical assistance, is there any chance we might get reimbursed for the however many, the consultancy fees? I'm not sure exactly how that works. I believe what they've done is they've um, contracted with vendors to essentially work with small communities like ours to sort of act like a phone support or email support mm -hmm. kind of system. And so they're available for probably a, a virtual appointments and things like that to kind of answer questions about the application process. But I 
they're not operating they're not offering the actual application completion services and i just um when we were looking through the how complicated this process is um we just didn't feel like we had the staff uh time to allocate towards like coordinating all of the different potentially several departments and things like that to get this all ready makes sense um um I think the agreement says there's a two-year commitment. Is that our two-year commitment to the consultant? Is there. that what that means? Okay. There. Um, thank you. And do we do we have a sense of do we have letters out to local nonprofits that we're potentially trying to connect with, or is that something the consultant would do? So part of this process is that community input. Once we kind of determine what sorts of projects are available, um, those suggestions could come from any of the residents or also could mm. come, come from community and nonprofit partners. And so there might be a nonprofit organization in the North End that's really excited to work on a project uh, and they might come forward and offer to be a partner. Um, I mentioned in this that uh, One Roof could be a potential partner for affordable housing. Um, and mm. so I think as we know more about what those project components are, that will help us determine who potential partners could be. Uh, you know, we could contact the um, Lake Superior Health Clinic if we have mm -hmm. health initiatives. We could contact, um, you know, um, the Estuarium or, or uh, St. Louis River Alliance or whatever, if they're river related kind of water components. Okay. There's going to be a number of different nonprofit organizations in our community that are doing awesome work and might want to sign on to this project um, and be a co-applicant. Um, but I think the process is for us to get going and then have all this public input opportunity so that those organizations can come forward with a proposal and neighbors can come forward and tell us what would be helpful for them. And then once we know kind of what our options are, then we can kind of determine who our co-applicants are. Thank you. Um, you mentioned uh, public input um, and who is hosting those and who's, who's planning those, who's preparing those bids. Is that city staff or is that the consultant? So we haven't gone over all those details yet, um, but it could be a partnership with city staff and potentially someone from their staff to help us with uh, marketing uh, those things. Um, our fire chief offered to perhaps host an open house at the fire hall. Uh, and so that would be nice for community members to see um, that facility and what's offering their emergency medical services and stuff now, and then also see some of the opportunities um, that we would have if we had a new uh, station there, and so that's an opportunity. Um, there's also the um, music uh, mm -hmm. events that happen at Wade Bowl, and because one of the potential projects is at Wade that would be a great opportunity where there's already community and um, neighborhood residents there uh, to collect input with a table and, and find out from people their ideas. Um, and of course, City Hall is located, uh, and so we could have something prior to a council meeting or whatever, or um, you know, at City Hall here. Uh, and then the farmers market, um, kind of you know, on the other part of downtown, is also. Um, located in the area and so we could table there and collect input there and things and so there's a bunch of different opportunities where we don't have to re recreate the wheel we can kind of add on to things and and um, join other community events to try and get as much input as possible so it could be a partnership between the grant strategists and our local people as well and I can help coordinate some local stuff as well and I'm sure staff can help with some of those things as well um, yeah we just need a, this organization to help us kind of coordinate everything from the top and get the application really put together. In similar cases, city staff have usually done the like work of organizing the actual meeting. We get a, uh, the, the materials are usually supplied by the consultant. I just have a couple more questions. Um, you mentioned one roof. Is there a possibility if they get rejected and we get rejected that a, a twin ports application could be stronger? Or is that even possible? Um, so I... Um, the application that's being completed in Duluth isn't by One Roof. Um, mm -hmm. That's a different nonprofit organization over there. Um, and they're, I think they have different um, 
goals and outcomes they're looking for for their residents. And so um, our process will probably run parallel to theirs and I hope we both get funded. Um, but I don't, I don't think it would necessarily strengthen our grant if we work together. In fact, I think it might complicate it um, because it becomes less, the, the application will become less centralized to the residents in the neighborhood. And mm -hmm. so it will be stronger if we can really show that it's what the people in our, our neighborhood want, so. See, like North End, West Duluth. But um, you mentioned not reinventing the wheel. Um, over the last four or five years, um, whether it was the community um, theater arts, we did a public um, input survey for that. We did the comp plan input. We did um, the comprehensive rec plan. We did the active transportation plan. We did um, applications for stormwater and landscaping that you know North End participated in. Can we reuse any of that data? Yes, okay. and add new data to it. But okay. yeah, I think the more we can show that we've gathered input, the better. Okay, thank you. And finally, um, can we, um, I, I'll just say um, that I appreciate the gusto. I feel like when I was as kind of where you are in your tenure, I, people would get really irritated with me for not like following the rules. So I just appreciate that about you and um, just wanting to get to work. Um, is there a way that we could put something of a not to exceed on this or could we put um, or could we approve you know up to twenty thousand dollars which I think would um, maybe help with the non-bid process but could we put a not to exceed 160 hours and then they could come back and report or could we just put something a check in point or a not to exceed on this? There is uh, already a not to exceed. It's not to exceed 81,000. So you could amend the 81,000 down. Uh, it is pointless and therefore out of order to amend that number below 25,000 because I can simply hire them for that amount. Mm -hmm. uh, the, so any number between 25,000 and 81,000 would be a, a valid amendment. And uh, since we are talking, there have been a number of suggested proposed motions coming up here just uh the the general order we would do that would be an amendment first because then a, a proposal as amended could always be referred postponed voted down uh then we would look at motions that dispose of uh, of the main motion like uh postponement or referral so uh I'll, I'll probably call for it in that order when we get to the point i'm just gonna let us get through questions here and then we'll we'll start calling for more uh, other motions. Thank Anything you. Anything else, Councilor Vincent? Thank you. I just wanted to, um, if there was a way to maybe just limit the amount we're biting off without completely stopping or sending back, um, and I'll um, ask, we'll wait on that for just a second. Thank you. Councilor Ludwig, did you still want to speak? Sorry. Um, well, yeah, just some of the questions I had, you know, when I was going through um, the, well, the proposal you know, from the company, um, I, I, I guess I, for, I, I didn't really see to my satisfaction, uh, are they the ones, I mean, in the end, will they be the ones writing the grant for us? I mean, I saw all this, um, you know, I, I guess I'm not really sure in, I've got a question on the partnership because, of course, we don't even know who we're going to partner with, and that's, uh, you know, that that's a big part. I mean, we need a partner for the for the grant. Um, there, and then, yes, going through their proposal, I guess uh, the deliverables. I I wasn't certain. In in the end, are they the ones that are going to write the grant for us? Um, and I, you know, and I did go on the EPA's website and, and did a little research, and some of the questions here too were, um, the first tranche of grants, I believe, were they were going to be awarded in in March, so I think the process has already began, mm -hmm. and it's a rolling grant, and so, yes, I mean, if you know, if we delay, we do risk them running out of funding because this is a, uh, you know, a competitive grant process. Um, of course, so uh, um, I, I just I, I have a lot of questions, but I, you know, on the other hand, I I don't want to miss out on this opportunity. So um, 
that the $81,000 does um, concern me. Um, is, is there a way that we could, um, without it being delayed with all these committees, to submit um, RFPs, you know, in a timely manner? Um, yes, I... Uh the, the administration has the authority to, sum, to always submit an RFP. We can submit an RFP for anything or anything. Obviously, we want to be a little bit responsible. We want that to be done in good faith so that we really intend to recommend a contract at the end of it. Um, the, uh, so, you know, as I explained before, if, if, for, if this were either significantly held up where, where I didn't think the council was leaning towards uh, uh, waiving the bid procedure uh, in the end or – if it just voted down altogether, I would probably just put out an RFP in the next week or two. And now that's going to take some time to get bids back. And then if one of the bidders, including this one, uh, looks to accomplish the goals of the proposal, I'm going to bring an actual contract uh, a, or full proposal as uh, as it was submitted for the council to approve. Of course, that'll take a couple of weeks, but I can start an RFP process fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. I just... Um I guess in my mind, I would feel better in my logical mind if it was us that was, um, you know, setting the scope and the deliverables. Reading through this proposal, I, I still don't have it clear in my mind the process and, you know, how the whole process is going to work, the partnerships. And so um, so I would feel better if, if, like I said, if we set the scope, if we set the deliverables and put it out for, for bid in a timely manner. So we, you know, the the grant, the I I know there's a lot to work through, but the app, the app, the drop dead application deadline is November 21st, 2024, mm -hmm. and then also reading, I do believe, reading through this, it um, it says awards under the community uh, grants change, the change grants program are limited by statute to three years in duration. Therefore, community change grant proposals must be designed to be performed and completed within three years from the award date. So, um, so you know, I, I guess if we were awarded the grant, we'd have three years as far as the information that I read going through. Um, and I may be, you know, I may be wrong, um, Councilor Moffitt, because you said 2026, but that mm -hmm. I did, um, in reading through that today, it said three years, which would make more sense to me. But anyway, that, that's my two cents, so. Before I recognize Councillor Elm, just about everybody's spoken, Councillor Herrick or Ledeen, any questions or discussion? Well, I'm not gonna say too much. I don't wanna start coughing again and again. I apologize for that. I don't know what happened back here. Something just jumped in my throat and just wouldn't quit. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Um, no, I think, uh, again, uh, Councilor Moffitt did a real good job as far as going into this project. Uh, he put a lot of time and work into it. You know, however, though I do have to agree with uh, Councilor Fennessy that you know we should go through a proper procedure on this. Um, and I think if we if we start that right away, I think I th I, th I think we can still get this done. So that, that's just my two cents. So thank you, Councilor Elm. I'm. Um, Again, I, I think going through the proper process is wise, but if time is of the essence, I'm not entirely opposed to approving this tonight. But still had some questions for Lisa MC too. You know, uh, I'm not super familiar with your company, like your history, your key performance indicators, maybe your company size, how many employees you have, do you have a lot of customers, and particularly the age of your company. And particularly, I'm asking these questions because do, do you have the capacity to help us? Your website right now has hiring for these positions, and I just want a, a better grasp of, of you know, the composition of your company and, and the size of it. I, I don't know if you could maybe give a little history about the age of your company and what it's able to do. Thank you, Councillor, and this is um, this is um, Lisa again Mueller with MC2 Collaborative. So we are under the umbrella of MC2 Engineering and Construction. And we have been in operation for over 20 years. We are an 8A designation of women-owned small business, which we claim uh, very proudly, uh, and also can serve as a huge advantage to your applications as well. 
because part of the Biden-Harris administration does require a portion of DEIA, diversity, equity, inclusion, accessibility. So there's value in what our company and organization brings to the table. Um, we probably have uh, over 50 employees, a seasonal part-time contract, 1099 employees. Uh, as you can imagine with the different divisions, we have engineering, construction, design. We also have a land and real estate uh, division along with mine, which is resource acquisition and government affairs. So my division specializes in grant services. And the question of capacity, absolutely, that's a great question. Um, we're always looking, we always want people, uh, we, we search out uh, talent and technology to make sure that we're always on the leading edge. Uh, we have over uh, 10 full-time employees that are dedicated in very strong positions to make sure that we can manage the capacity. And then we have the ability to seasonally and project specific to turn up the dial as needed. Uh, we uh, manage a crew that uh, allows us to facilitate those projects on a federal, state, regional, and local level, uh, level, along with congressionally directed spending. And we have another federal partner along with Merchant McIntyre, which is another firm out of Washington, D.C. So we have those partners physically in D.C. In addition to that, uh, we've recently shared the stage with EPA Region 8 David Piantanita uh, to uh, represent Wyoming Funding Summit on the hills in the ask of Senators Barrasso, Lummis, and Governor Gordon. So we have been in a position to be the teacher, trainer, instructor, facilitator uh, for two years in a row. So it's an opportunity for us to shine as a, a, in our experience and expertise uh, and demonstration of the work that we've done. Also, in addition to that, um, when Councillor Lugwood asked the question about who writes the grants, I also wanna make sure it's important to note that no one person writes a grant. It is a Herculean effort uh, on everyone's part. And it is a contribution by all people, all organizations and all departments. But the, um, as I will sometimes say, uh, the degree of herding cats uh, is also something we're very good at. We're comfortable in the complexity of gathering information and being able to submit it because it comes down to being able to collect the information in a way that the federal government requires in very specific details and instructions in fine print uh, and then get it into the portal ready. So it is a combination. We can't do it alone along with city efforts not being able to do it alone on their own uh, as well. And one other additional remark regarding uh, the consultant's uh, time being reimbursed. Uh, going back to the idea that as part of EPA and the Biden-Harris administration for EJA, IIJA dollars, is that it is very specific to investment, investment resilience. And we want to be able to make those demonstrations. So the work or the dollars that are spent on services of which we provide along with maybe other engineers or other, our, uh, other contracted um, contributors to the project, that would be absolutely written in as an investment in that EPA resilience uh, and for what the narrative is asking for. So in other words, we're capturing it in a way that says that not only is the city uh, uh, directing this leadership for this capacity of growth for infrastructure, but they're also saying we're investing in these subject matter experts who can facilitate this project. And that absolutely um, is one of those markers. It's an indicator. So back to keywords, uh, keyword indicators, that is one piece that you may not be reimbursed for it, but you can use it as a positive in your narrative and demonstration for the work that's being done leading up to it. So you're on the right track, you're asking the right questions. Um, and in addition to that, the last piece is a community benefit plan. The federal government in most of these cases uh, for federal applications are requiring com community benefit plans, especially on the Department of Energy side. And when you can assemble the people, the partners, the stakeholders in that communication engagement of which uh, Councillor Moffat has described, you're bringing all those parties together and we have orchestrated many of those already to date successfully in federal grant applications. So we already know what's expected. What's expected. It is an evolving and changing world, which is why grant surveillance is so important to us and the work that we're uh, doing. Because in addition to the NOFOs, which is the Notice of Funding Opportunities, which have the fine print, the federal government says what's required, NOFOs are technically on a 2.5 year delay. 
and they're making changes on a regular basis. So we know what the, if we're doing our job in the grant surveillance world, we know based on our relationships with those funders and our partners in DC, we're hearing the pendulum swing of those interests of what are those keywords and shifts in the funding. So I, I appreciate those counselors who have also done the homework to see who's been funded. Because in addition to that, that is an indicator of what they're wanting to see built in the infrastructure for each and those dollars that they're giving out. So again, you're, I, I value and appreciate all the remarks and all the questions, which absolutely leads me to a place of saying you're doing the right things for the right reasons and you're aligning that mission with what the federal government intends to fund. So keep talking and keep sharing those remarks because you're headed in the right direction. Thank you. Councilor Vincent. Thank you. Um, Lisa, thanks for that um, response about the reimbursement. I, I wanted to ask, are, are you involved in filling this out for any other communities? And um, I, I'll just ask that first. Great question. Uh, thank you, Councilor Vensicle. I appreciate that. So we, um, we have assisted an EPA grant, uh, and we will not, uh, because we're very particular about the projects that we take uh, so that there is not a conflict. Um, we are very cautious about the cycle and the due dates. And so the, the window of which you have, there is no conflict. We're not writing this grant for any other um, client at the same time. Thank you. Um, and if the council requested, um, you know, something of a workup, like letters of reference, outlines, sample timelines, just something of a, a framework, average costs, is that something you could provide? I am happy to provide Councillor Vensicle anything that you ask, but I want to make sure I'm understanding the question. When you ask for a timeline or additional documents, do you mean as samples of work that we've done, or do you mean samples of the project? Uh, let me refrain. Let me let me rephrase the question. That we are looking for samples of how we would build out timeline for our work on a grant service project, or do you mean timeline specific to a project that would be submitted to the federal government? There's a distinguished line. I just want to make sure I'm understanding the difference. I I, I guess I would defer to you in in what would be most helpful and understandable. Um, sure. Uh, I thank you, and I think. Um, you know, I, I saw an article in the Telegram today that there were some um, projects for cleanup in the North End, some some environmental cleanups. And, you know, I think if, if the counselor was, was willing to put a lower um, cap on the spending where we could um, potentially regroup at the same, uh, if we could approve a, a smaller number somewhere between 26,000 and 30, 30,000. I think that North End is worth it. And um, I think um, if, if the amount were smaller, I, I think, I don't think we could get into too much trouble and I'm willing to take a chance on North End. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Moffitt, I'll recognize you one last time. I think we're past questions at this point. There, there may be more, but we should probably try and get to some decisions here. So uh, can you make some brief final remarks? Yeah, sure. I, I guess I would entertain um, if somebody was interested in a motion to uh, decrease the maximum amount. Um, essentially, we're just trying to look at how to get this project started. And from a practical standpoint, not knowing how many hours it's going to take, the administration could have assumed that perhaps it would be under the $25,000 and could have just started the project with this consultant. Uh, but we're really here because we wanted to like get the community involved and get the council involved as soon as we possibly could. Um, I wish I could have pitched this project to everyone last year. I didn't know about it. <laughs> so, um, you know, and I understand this is not the ideal process. Um, again, thank you for uh, humoring me and letting me bring this up tonight. That being said, um, whether the amount uh, maximum not to exceed number is 81000 or you approve a little bit less or whatever, 
uh, I'd, I'd really like to get going on the project. It's not like we're going to write a check for $81,000 next week and it's going to go to the, uh, you know, the consultant. Um, we're paying an hourly rate, $135 an hour. Try and hire an electrician or a plumber tomorrow for that. This is not a large amount of money. Um, it's roughly what we paid for a pickup truck for the fire department. Uh, you know, <laughs> probably we're going to end up spending less than that, right? But what we can get out of this is potentially $20 million of neighborhood improvement for one of the areas of the city that the federal government recognizes needs it the most. And so uh, we have this money sitting aside. We haven't been using it for anything. Um, it's just extra money that really, I think this is the intent of it, right? Is like, we're not just spending the money on a small project. We're using it as an investment to get so much more for people that really could use it. The items that we talked about, uh, tonight and the ideas that the community and our nonprofit partners can bring forward would be absolutely transformational for this neighborhood. And again, not a penny of this goes to my district, but it's super important because when that area does better, it ripples and it'll ripple into my district and it'll ripple into everybody else's district. Most of you are on the committees um, that will be looking at projects for this and you'll get a chance to develop proposals, put those out to bid, work with vendors, all these things. And so this is just the beginning of a project that we could have started without bringing it forward to you this evening. Uh, but this is as soon as we could bring it forward to everyone and get you involved and really make this a, a ground up community effort. So, um, if you must, uh, decrease the amount, uh, decrease the amount, but please let's get started. Uh, it's not a crazy amount of money. The money's just sitting around specifically to invest in something like this where we can get a really big return on our investment. Um, and our other local vendors do not have the capabilities of this organization to do this grant. Um, I've written a lot of grants. I don't have the ability to manage this process. The same is true for our other local grant writers. We cannot shoulder this onto our staff people and expect them to do it in house. Um, but they can help with some of it, which will help keep that dollar amount lower. Um, I'm just, I really hope we can move forward if you need to lower the amount, but, but let's get started. Uh, the people in the North end need this. Okay. Uh, Councillor Fennessy. Um, I, I started off by saying that, you know, I, I would much rather see this go to the committee first, but we've, we've kind of had that committee conversation here tonight. And, um, and so I think, I think possibly Councilor Ludwig might have offered up the, the, the right solution. And instead of sending this to a committee where it either gets referred to another committee or it gets referred back here or, you know, whatever, and just stalls out in a committee, I don't think any of us, yeah, at least the, the impression I'm getting, are, are saying let's, let's not do this. I think the, you know, the, the hesitation is let's make sure we're, we're doing it right. And so, you know, what, what Councillor, you know, Ludwig, you know, kind, kind of asked is what if instead of going to a committee, we just basically, in a sense, send it back to the administration to do the, you know, the, the RFQ, because then from there, you know, we, we can get multiple different, different ideas, different ways of, of doing this, and then we can kind of you know, f figure it out and, you know, look at those different, uh, different proposals and uh, that it might answer some of the unanswered you know questions that are still left here tonight and so um be, because i i know the we're, we're, we're talking a big big number eighty one thousand hundred and sixty whatever five dollars an hour i would almost prefer if we had somebody come in and say you know we're, we're gonna for for fifty thousand or for eighty thousand dollars we're just gonna take you to the finish line um instead of you know just the you know not knowing if it's going to be 30,000, 40,000, whatever, just, just somebody come in and say, we, we can take you to the finish line, get you, you know, on, on the, on the desk for, you know, for a decision, um, you know, for X amount. But I, I would, I, I think Councilor Ludwig had it, had it right where if, if we just put it out for, for bid, then we can weigh those, those decisions. So, so Mayor, I don't know where, if that requires a, a motion to send it, to, to you or if we would just postpone this for two No, weeks? The, the best way to accomplish that is to simply vote down the main motion. Be, as I explained before, if the motion fails, I'll put it out to bid more or less immediately because that 
I, putting it out to bid does nothing except solicit proposals. So, uh, and we never really entertain motions to put something out to bid. Even committees just request the administration do that. We do that. Sometimes we bring scope to committees. Uh, but in this case, I think we, uh, the scope is very clear. So we would put this out to bid ourselves directly. So the best way to accomplish that, I would not recommend any motions uh, to do that except to simply vote no on the main motion. If you if you object to, because if, if we, if it does not pass, the bidding requirements have not been waived. And, and then we, we, would have to go through the bidding process. What about what about a, a motion to amend, not waiving the you know, st- strikeout, not waiving or whatever the bidding requirements? Because we're we're, we're going to need to. I'm just trying to think of skipping a future step. If 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 this is under twenty five thousand, then your your office can just take it. But if, if it's over twenty five thousand, do you still need the council uh, approval yes. to do that? So I guess, I guess that's what I'm trying to. You know, to, to accomplish is it's not even the you know the, the spend that's that that's that concerning me because I think we'd get our money you know, tenfold hundredfold I I would just rather see this go out for out for bid but I wouldn't want to you know send send it you know or, you know vote it down tonight you take it and then uh, next you know two weeks from now you come back and you say you want to we need your approval now because you know what we're looking at is over twenty five thousand so is there any way that we can accomplish if you're for following me, all of that tonight, send it back to you with e- even keep that same dollar amount. Uh, generally speaking, the only time you would ever need to make a motion uh, to that effect would be if I or the administration general refuse to put something out to bed. If we were saying, nope, I will, I'm not going to occupy Jane Darwin's time with that, uh, then you could make a, a, a motion conceivably compelling it, uh, submitting your own your own bid. Uh, it, uh, but in this case, I'm absolutely going to put it out to bid. So you, I'm, I'm just trying to make the, the parliamentary process the easiest way. Uh, uh, to make a new motion would unnecessarily complicate it. Uh, if you reject the main motion, it is going out to bid. The reason to not reject the main motion, the reason to vote yes, is to see. So to accomplish what you want, Councillor Fennessy, you would vote no on the main motion. To accomplish what Garner Moffat wants, uh, uh, to speed up the process, even committee would be faster than that. That's been my uh, – I'm not necessarily arguing against that. I just want the council to be clear. The bidding process typically takes at least 30 days to advertise. There's going to be a week, maybe even two, of a set of creating the actual uh, request for proposals. So we will be into the uh, – could be in – to June, by the time we're getting those proposals back, then we would make a recommendation. I'd meet with Councillor Moffat, and uh, we'd have the other bidders, and we would bring that to the council, and you would you would then approve that contract. So you'd see everything. The only argument against that is time. It, mm-hmm. So doing nothing or voting no sends this to bid. Sure. So there there wouldn't be any way to. I mean, I, I don't think any any of us want to vote you know, no, and I also don't know if that would. If that would be a bad look, you know, we're asking for a, a large, a large grant when you know four weeks earlier the council voted no to you know, to do that. I, I don't know if that if if those dots would ever get connected in gotcha. the the grant process. Okay, if if you apps uh, that actually is covered, the lowest precedence motion you can make is um, let me just double check. I think it's postpone indefinitely. Uh, which is usually done when folks don't want to vote no on something because they don't want to express disapproval of it. They just don't want it considered right now. Postponing indefinitely would also put it out to bid. However, we could still discuss everything else that – so if somebody want, if you made a motion to postpone indefinitely, uh, we could – I'm going to get this wrong. You, we could conceivably amend that, but postpone indefinitely would do the same thing as voting no. So would um, objection to the consideration of the question. Uh, uh, but you need six votes to pass any of those, right? And then, so, so if if there's a motion to postpone indefinitely, then it, it just stays off until somebody brings it back, you know, to the table. And that that right. time would be like if you have the you know, the, the RFQ or whatever. Okay, so I'll, I'll make a motion to postpone indefinitely. Motions to postpone indefinitely. Is there a second? second. Motions by Councilor Fennessy, the second by Councilor Johnson. To postpone indefinitely. Uh, well, this is a new question. If anybody would like to argue for or against that, I, I'd ask that you keep it relatively brief. I think most folks have made their position clear. Councillor Johnson, I'll just reiterate. Like I, I don't want to vote against the North End or against 
any money, so this seems like the best next option um, for now. Further discussion on the motion to postpone indefinitely. There we go. Okay, uh, Councilor Moffitt. I would I encourage people to vote against the motion. Um, if if you want to lower the amount, make a motion to amend or refer it to a committee. Make a motion to refer it to a committee. I I we, we got to move this forward, and a motion to postpone indefinitely does not move it forward. Further discussion on the motion to postpone indefinitely, Councilor Fennessy. I'll be really quick. It uh, I think it absolutely does move it forward. It it moves it forward by opening up our. Uh, a range of companies that were asking to you know, submit a, a, a proposal and we, we may we may have one that comes in uh, b better metrics lower price you know or you know or, or whatever they may have you know some better ideas and that's that, that's exactly what this, this does so this in no way stalls it if if anything it just moves it forward with um, you know, with more purpose Councilor Van Sickle um. Can you, ex sorry, there was a, a motion and a second by Councillor Moffitt and Grasky, and then a motion to postpone indefinitely that supersedes the original motion? Yes, this, okay. is, uh, this disposes of the main motion. Okay. Um, and a motion to postpone indefinitely does not automatically go to either the plan commission or back here it it disappears until somebody bring it disappears forever until somebody brings it back in some other form postpone indefinitely is not the same as somebody bringing it back from the table though right no that uh you would have to postpone to the next meeting for it to come back automatically or the motion to table we almost never use that only affects this meeting tonight you could bring it back later tonight uh postpone is when we want to talk about it on some other date postpone indefinitely i would also argue you know because our rules are on reconsideration we would typically want it to be something else you know as Councillor fennessy described it would be you know in the form of a new contract or uh, uh we've put it out to bid um Technically, nothing prevents a counselor from reintroducing something at every meeting that I'm aware of. Okay. Postpone indefinitely does not approve it, but does not vote against it. The, the whole point of this motion is to stop this from happening without expressing disapproval of the concept. That's, that's how it's described right in Robert's rules. So... With the intention, though, to give the administration an opportunity to prepare an RFQ, receive the proposals, and present to the council those options? Yes. I mean, that, that's what Councilor Fennessy expressed. It's what I've said I, I would do. Again, I'm not recommending this motion, but uh, if, if this is not adopted tonight, I've said a few times I intend to put this out to bid. I mean, you're... You're not forcing me to do it, but that's what I'm telling you I'm going to do. Well, I, I guess then I would wonder, well, why didn't it, if it was, I don't know how long this has been in motion, a day or a week, uh, three weeks, I have no idea. The reason we didn't is because, you know, as Councilor Moffat, I think, described pretty ably, you know, the bidding process takes a long time. It would have taken longer than approving it tonight. It will, even if we had started this when he first brought it up, we would still be in the bid process. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. I'm, I'm not going to support the motion, and, and instead um, I, we, we can take the vote first, but I'll, I'll, sug I'll suggest that we spend no more than 28000 Thank you. Any further discussion on the motion to postpone indefinitely? Councillor Moffat? Yeah, just, just real quick. If we end up in a bidding process, we could be looking at mid-June before this comes back to the council to select a consultant. That means then we have to schedule public meetings. That means those are mid-July. Then we have to assemble all the data, come back to the council to select projects. Then we're looking at August, probably mid-August. Then we have to develop all of those projects. That means if you want to build a fire hall, 
you have to figure out how much is the fire hall going to cost? Who can we go through? Which means that process takes time. You want to build a broadband network? You need to spec that all out, figure out exactly what's the dollar amount on that. And you're starting in August. The applications are due in November. If we go through this and delay it tonight, we might not be able to get the funds. And it severely limits the projects that we can do because we have to be able to like send in the full application. And the longer we wait, the lesser our odds are. And if we extend it this long, we might not even be able to apply. Really nervous about saying this, but technically all other motions can be made before we vote on this. Uh, so you could make a motion to amend. If you feel like it would affect people's decision to postpone indefinitely, you can make a motion to amend right now. But the, uh, it's, it's the lowest precedent motion. You know, it's the second people look confused. I regretted saying that. Uh, is there any further discussion on the motion? But Councilor Elm. Yes, I'm um, just kind of going back and forth in my head and, and what Councilor Moffitt said and the deadline in November. Again, going through this bidding process before can take a lot of time, and I'd hate to jeopardize it, especially if other consultants, if this is getting more popular, they're going to be filled up with other municipalities, nonprofits. So um, I, I guess I, I respect the spirit of where Councilor Fantasy is going with this, but I, I think we need to make a, some kind of decision tonight so we don't further jeopardize these larger dollars. Uh, Mayor. Councilor Johnson, I'll <laughs> I'll jump in that water uh, that you just uh, laid out there for us. I'll make a motion <laughs> to have um, MC two come back to council with a contract instead of an agreement uh, prior to the next meeting. I, I think that's out of order. I don't think we can compel them to do anything. Um, we can note your statements for the minutes if you'd like. Uh, so, I guess my the point of that then would be, I would like to see a, a, an actual contract or agreement before it, with a, with a clearer scope of work from our end, uh, versus just a um, what we have in front of us right now. And I feel like that might get us to the finish line on getting something passed tonight. Then what you want is a motion to postpone to the next meeting. Uh, and then you can vote yes or no based on whether they bring that contract or postpone to any other time you name. Okay. Um, all men to postpone until the next meeting uh, and add a caveat that I hope to see a contract at the next meeting. Is there a second to the most motion to postpone to the next meeting? Hearing no second, that motion fails. Okay, further discussion on the motion to postpone indefinitely. Okay, here, Councilor Mansickle. Sorry, can I just ask, um, the next council meeting's in? Three weeks. Three weeks. Um, and if we asked for materials, samples, letters of reference, does that feel outrageously out of reach? Uh, I have to ask. Councilor Moffitt, if you can answer very briefly. Yeah, I would just say there are references attached to this and some of the grant proposals that they've worked on before. Um, so some of those qualifications and references are here to check, um, you know, yeah. and so um, there are people here with, um, you know, information listed. Um, so there, there's already references here. Please, you know. Did we check them? Um, I, I'm not aware that we have. I didn't. Um, okay. Um, th okay. Thank you, Councilor Graski. I okay. I feel like I'm here from everyone, really, including myself. A lot of I guess, I guess, I guess, and so I think we really need to try to think of a compromise here. And I'm sorry that might not be a nice slam dunk as as maybe thought, but let's. I, I would encourage this council to come up with something that meets in the middle from all of the feelings that we have right now. Okay. I, I got to offer this, counselors. You can make a motion to amend the main motion that will either pass or it, or it will fail. 
and then the motion will be amended or not. And after we have figured out whether we're going to amend it, then we will be coming back to the question of whether to postpone. I've, I've been reading this and reading this. I'm sure about that. If somebody wants to make a motion to amend, it is in order. We will set aside motion to postpone indefinitely, come back to that motion after we have resolved any amendments the council wants to talk about. You've all, uh, several of you have mentioned it. Is there anybody that wants to make a motion to amend the main motion? Councilor Van Sickle. Can I make a motion to strike uh, not to exceed $81,000 to not to exceed $28,000 um, pending a, a presentation from MC, what was it, MC2, um, with, with something of a progress report um, at, at that um, amount or hourly? How many hours is that? Twenty-eight thousand uh, dollars, not to exceed. Um, yeah, Councilor, I'm going to I'm going to recommend just limiting that amendment to the number twenty-eight thousand dollars. When that is hit, you can require anything you want before approving more money. Thank you. Uh, the motion is to amend the main motion by striking out the number eighty-one thousand and replacing with twenty-eight thousand. Is there a second to that motion? The motion is by Councilor Van Sickle, the second by Councilor Ladine to amend again. This will not set. This will not. We'll come back to postpone indefinitely. The question is just whether to change that number from 61000 to 28000 Any discussion? From 81000 to 28000 Apologies. I have, a slight, I'm sorry, I have a slight question. So are we asking for that amount to – we spend that amount at twenty eight, then we have a progress report. Is that what I heard? She mentioned that. That's not going to be part of okay. the motion. Okay. Uh, but obviously there would be a progress report before any more money can gotcha. be Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Johnson? I mean, whether we spend 81, 28, or 30, we're still going to end up spent, like, at the same point when we come back. If, if they come back at $28,000, we're still going to end up having the same exact discussion. I mean, I mean this is, it seems, I, I, get where, I get where you're trying to go with this or where we're, we're headed, but aren't we just, if they come back at, Twenty-eight thousand. Where they're just going to be coming back asking for more money? Is it? But there, is that just a checks and balance? I guess is that what? C conceivably, that would, they would they be? would come back for more money, but this just prohibits the administration from spending more than twenty-eight thousand. Okay. So, so if they need more, if we want to spend more, we must have the council's permission to do so. So f with the representative uh, from MC two, can you do this for twenty-eight thousand dollars? If I'm understanding the question, we'll agree to reducing the cap for a certain period of time. I, there, there's no way we can put ourselves in a position to say we're going to do the entire grant with all of the deliverables for that amount. So we're not agreeing to um, doing all of the work and services that it requires to get you into portal ready grant submitted for $28,000. But in the spirit of what you're trying to address, that there's a benchmark, a DMARC line for deliverables, we're happy to comply. It's just a matter of stating it in such a way that it helps us to accomplish that goal. But I just want to also ensure that we're not agreeing to reduce the hours to get you to that grant because I can tell you it's not feasible based on our experience with the federal grants we've been submitting just to within the last week. So I, I honor what you're trying to do, but Thank I, you. I just want to make sure we phrase it properly. Okay. I guess that... That makes sense. I, I think we, if we're going to award this bid, we should award the bid for the the total amount, not a, a different amount. So I guess I'll be voting no against that. Questions, uh, Councilor Fantasy. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm kind of uh, tracking Councilor Johnson there. I, I don't know what that what what that solves. If if it's eighty one thousand, I mean, although it's kind of a guess, you know, Councilor Moffitt. I mean, it's you based it on something, right? It's no. right. So I mean, it's knowing that it's going to cost $81,000 but then just to drop it down to to 20 you know what whatever thousand I, I don't know what that what that accomplishes but again that, that brings brings me back to my original point is without a, a contract with deliverables in that contract we don't we, we don't know where we're where we're at where if, if we had a contract that had these are the the deliverables we'd be able to say all right let's pull out if, if the if the goal is to get the spend down, let's pull out deliverable A, Z, and an M, 
we, we, we can do that ourselves to get the, you know, the cost of this down, but we, we don't have a contract. And so that, that, that's why it's, it's so hard to just, just say, yeah, let, let's, let's just lower the number. Let's, let's raise the number or, you know, leave, leave it the same because we, we don't have a contract or as the agenda states, we don't, we don't have an agreement that, that we can even review, look at or anything like that. So Councilor Graski. I would beg to question that is that our job? I mean, I understand is it our job to decide how this grant is supposed to have taken out YZ, whatever letter of that. I mean, that's the point of investing into this company to use a specific money from a fund that will potentially create a very large, large investment that at some point this part of town has not maybe even been considered. So I just, I get that we're gonna, we could sit here all night and throw around numbers, but I would encourage that we either go for it or we decide on something. Councilor Moffitt. Yeah, so real quick, uh, so the $81,000, again, it was laid out in my thing, is um, was selected by me, not by the um, consultant, because it is six months worth of work, roughly, to get the grant done. It, their uh, offer to us is $135 an hour, and they said 75 to 100 hours each month. Um, essentially, worst case scenario, it's $81,000, but it shouldn't be. A large part of what we're asking them to do is to wrangle cats. And those cats are us uh, and the city staff. And if tonight's an indication, <laughs> it can be very difficult, right? And so um, the, the higher that amount is, uh, is totally dependent on our staff and upon us and on how much work it ends up being to have to email somebody four times to get an estimate on something or to wait to get replies on emails or to, uh, you know, um, get numbers from the finance department or to, or to, or to work with um, consultants that we're working for to do a bid for a new fire hall or something. And so that's why it's so incredibly ambiguous uh, because there's just a, a large number of unknowns. Uh, worst case scenario, it takes them 100 hours a month. I sure hope it doesn't. Um, but that's why there's this cap here. Um, because um, managing a project like this, it can just be crazy. And you're largely dependent on getting information from other people, a lot of other people, and then compiling it all. And so it's really difficult to put an A, B, C, D component structure into place because you're collecting a bunch of things and you're really compiling it at the end. So there isn't like a, oh, I finished the first two paragraphs or, oh, we finished the segment of it. Um, for example, they might fig finish the fire hall segment, but then not have numbers back for broadband or something. And so like determining what those deliverables are is really difficult until you have the final application put together. Um, uh, it's a max of 81,000 because of those numbers. And I sure hope it's less, but that's totally up to us and staff. Councilor Van Sickle. Thanks. I just wanted to, I guess I, I should have put more context. So 28,000 is about a third of the hours. Um, the full proposal I think is 600 hours. Um, so I guess my intention was just um, for us to see, uh, I, and I don't even know what they could provide with 200 hours um, worth of work at, at potentially, um, but I think that would give a, a progress point of a couple of months. Um, I, I guess I guess I'm not hearing what the heartburn is. Is it the money? Is it the not a contract? Is it the process? Um, so I, I guess it's a combination of all those things for different folks here. Um, my only intention was to um, um, not stall the not stall um, the process um, that that the administration essentially had the council's blessing to to move forward um, with an amount pretty close to an amount they, they could have moved forward with anyhow, um, just a few thousand dollars more. So um, it's it's about a third of the original proposal. So um, if, if it's the cost and the process, um, I think we've a, a, accomplished a, a great deal of that conversation tonight. So my only effort there was to break up the final cost to about a third. Um, and I don't know what the Lisa might be able to um, have us expect after 200 hours, um, 
I, I, I think Councillor Johnson's motion to postpone to the next council meeting made, made perfect sense as well. Um, maybe there would have been materials similar that could have been presented. I don't know. Um, but it, if this gets us going and it's a smaller amount, maybe that helps um, shore up some of the process and conversation. Thank you. The, ef the effect of the motion, the way I'm going to treat this, I, I, I'm not going to... If nothing happens tonight, if nothing is approved, again, I will put this out to bid. Uh, if some amount of money is approved at this point, I'm not going to just spend under 25000 without approval of the council for this consultant uh, and the waiving of the bids. At this point, I want the council's approval for this consultant. But if you approve it in this amount, I am going to begin working with them as though we are going to go the full six months. And then I will bring back their early results and more conversation before we run out of money. That would be the result of this if you adopt this motion. However, it, it's, still on, it's still in order to refer this if, if we, uh, well, postpone to the next council meeting did fail. You could postpone, or I'm sorry, you could refer to a committee of the whole, and we could just keep talking about this three weeks from now, you just take the whole package, uh, including this amendment, and postpone or, or, and, and send the whole thing to committee. That is a way of disposing of this now. Uh, that is about the one of the only motions remaining to us at this point. Uh, but unless somebody's going to take the mic right now and recommend that, I'm going to ask if there's any more discussion. I would, I, would, I would remind you, I think we've all, you've all expressed what you think of these proposals. Uh, and I don't know that debate is serving to convince anybody else anymore, so I'd, I'd encourage us to get to these questions. And unless there is a motion to refer to a committee, I'm going to ask if you're ready for the vote on the motion to, the, to amend. As I'm hearing nothing. The question then is whether to amend the main motion by striking out the number $81,000 and replacing it with the number $28,000. Uh, I'm going to take try a voice vote. All those in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. Those opposed say no. no. In the opinion of the chair, the no's carry and the motion fails. Uh, the question now is on whether to postpone indefinitely the entire motion. Uh, I Again, I believe we've all expressed ourselves on that question. Uh, this does not vote in favor or against the merits of the motion. It merely takes it off of our agenda with no particular opinion. And again, what I would do is move to put this out to bid. And I, at least, I would not bring anything else back to the council until I had proposals returned from that RFP, which would be a month and a half to two months from now, most likely, uh, unless a councilor brought something up via committee or directly to the floor. Question then is whether to postpone indefinitely. Uh, I All those in favor of the motion to postpone indefinitely, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed say no. no. I'll take a roll call just to be safe. I, I think that failed. Grasky. The question is postpone indefinitely. Grasky votes no. Ladine. No. Van Sickle. No. Moffat. No. Fennessy. Elm, no. Ludwig, no. Herrick. Uh, I have six against two in favor. I'm sorry. Oh my goodness, Mr. Johnson. Six in favor, three against, or I'm sorry, three in favor, six against. The motion to postpone fails. The question is now on the main motion. It is unamended. This is our final vote on whether to both recommend the waiving of the bidding requirements and approve uh, the agreement with MC2 Collaborative. Uh, I better take a roll call on this uh, as well. Mayor? Uh, Councilor Fennessy. The, we're, we're voting on, you, you said to approve the agreement with MC2. Yes. What agreement are we approving? Uh, there the, is the, no the, agreement in... So, so tomorrow morning when you sign the, you know, the, the, the council packet, what, what, what are you signing that the council approved? Because the agenda item is to waive the bidding requirements, which, yeah, that's in order, but to approve the, the agreement with MC2, but there is no agreement in the council packet with MC2. Yeah, there's a description of services. It's not a contract. 
it, it is true. We would, like any other vendor, we they would provide us services. We would pay for them. If, if we agree that they have provided the service as we understood it, we would pay it. But my, my question is, where is the agreement? That the proposal it, described in the packet. Can... Can, 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 can we get some clarification if, if we're, we're even in order uh, approving the agenda item that says we're approving an agreement, and that's the, that's why you stated the motion, but there is no agreement in the, in the council packet? I think, or, I mean, I, in my opinion, the, the term agreement is a semantic one. The, the main purpose of this, as I explained before, is to allow the administration to spend up to $81,000 uh, uh, with MC2 Collaborative. The, uh, we understand that they would be providing services substantially similar to what they've described. If uh, there is no contract that we could enforce, but they cannot compel us to spend the money either. Uh, I mean, Fry, Fry, I hate to put you on the, on the spot, but can, can we just make sure that we're, we're, we're on, on the right track, that we're, we're approving an agreement that doesn't exist? Well, the, the services are described in some part in the documents before you. I'm looking at, in particular, page five of their, of their proposal. And page five uh, lists their scope of services described and their grant-specific scope of services. So I would, I would say that's the cornerstone of what we would expect MC2 to start uh, doing for us after tonight, I mean, the mayor's right. When you, you know, I, what resonates with me was his, his comments earlier about uh, we, we've had agreements with with companies that have been thin. It doesn't mean they're unsuccessful. We've had agreements, development agreements, and other contracts with companies that haven't been thin, and they've and they've gone poorly. So this is going to come down to whether or not the firm that Ms. Mueller represents tonight and has described via Zoom uh, is going to deliver what they've talked about and if we can administer um, and, and, and monitor the work that they're doing for us and approve that by way of blessing the issuance of checks. And, and if this goes south in, in one, one, one way or the other, <laughs> Do we have any recourse where there's no actual uh, agreement? I mean, this is basically just like a, a handshake a agreement. Do we have any recourse if, if things are going south? Yeah, in my opinion, if, it's, if things are going south, we'll stop, we'll stop doing business okay. with them. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. If we fulfill that invoice at all, if we dispute that the services were provided, sure. we're not going to pay the invoice. Sure, yep. Um, all right, I think that's, that, that was it. Thank you, both of you. This is a question about the, mo about the motion. Real brief. Real Councilor brief. Johnson. If this motion passes, can we ask the administration to give us some specific updates periodically or somewhat frequently? Yes, of the course. Progress? The, uh, Maybe even a pr proposal or a progress f directly from the company uh, within the first couple of months because I – I can, I can commit to an update. I, I expect you're going to see quite a bit, but I'm happy to commit to an update or presentation uh, one month. Okay, thank you. The question is whether to waive the bidding requirements and approve the agreement with MC2 Collaborative. Uh, yes, approves both. No, uh, uh, fails to approve both. We will proceed by roll call. Ladine. Yes. Van Sickle. Yes. Moffat. Yes. Fennessy. No. Elm. Yes. Ludwig. Yes. Herrick. No. Johnson. No. Grasky. Yes. There are six in favor and three against. The motion carries. Uh, thank you, counselors. That went a long time, and I'm inclined to be frustrated by it, but that was actually a very good discussion for something of a novel uh, a subject that's come before so thank you all right item 10.3 economic development planning and port director circ recommends the approval of a resolution to approve the execution of a development agreement grant agreement and lease agreements in connection with 
the General Mills Operation LLC project. Motions by Councilor Elm, second by Councilor Fennessy. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed say no. The motion carries. Item 10.4, Economic Development Planning and Port Director Cirque recommends approval of the Department of Army's right of entry for construction agreement as it relates to the Wisconsin Point Beach Nourishment Project. Motion is by Councillor Fennessy, second by Councillor Ludwig. Is there discussion? Hearing, hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed say no. The motion carries. Do we have anybody signed up to speak? Is there anybody that wants to speak in business by public? If not, we have no further business and are adjourned. Good evening, counselors.